Today we're going to talk about the circulatory system. It's composed of two parts. The cardiovascular system, which means the heart, the veins, the arteries, and the capillaries, and then the lymphovascular system. Okay, it takes only 20 seconds for a red blood cell to circle the whole body. That means from our heart to our big toe, back up to our heart, 20 seconds. That's crazy. That's very fast. All right, so the two um, systems, they're interrelated. Cardiovascular or blood vascular circulates the blood. So when it asks what's the main um, function of the heart, it's to circulate the blood. And again, like I said, it includes the heart, arteries, veins, and capillaries. Lymph vascular system circulates our lymph, includes our lymph nodes and lymphatic vessels. We'll talk about that more here in a minute. Okay, the heart. It's a cone-shaped organ located in the chest. It's about the size of your closed fist like this. Okay, it has a membrane around it, like a skin. It's called the pericardium. So remember, card, um, cardiac arrest. That means heart. It moves our blood, it has four chambers, and it beats 60 to 100 times a minute. Okay, so the pericardium, again, is the skin that goes around the outside, the membrane. You've got your right atrium and your left atrium, your right ventricle and your left ventricle. Now, how I remember this is A comes before V. All right, so you just think of it this way. and. I know I'm pointing to the left when I'm saying the right, but it's how it sits in your chest. So if you turned it around, this would be your right, this would be your left, okay? All right, our blood is sticky and salty. Um, it brings nourishment and oxygen to all of our body, and it carries toxins and waste products out to be eliminated. The average adult blood supply is eight to 10 pints. So when you go and give blood and you give one pint of blood, that's fine. You're not um, uh, giving too much. Okay, again, it transports uh, oxygen, waste, nutrients, and hormones. So when it says what kind of tissue on the, um, on the test, what kind of tissue transports these things, you'll know that it's blood or liquid tissue. All right, protects the body from infections and disease-causing bacteria. It helps regulate our temperature and our blood pressure. Okay, our blood consists of a um, few different components. First of all, you've got your plasma. Okay, so I want you to envision that as being like a river going down, you watching the water go down the river or the stream. Okay, in that river, there are things like maybe leaves or, or something like that that you see bobbing around in the river. Okay, our plasma is the river and in it are these things, red blood cells and white blood cells, plus there's more on the next page. Okay, red blood cells, erythrocytes. So I remember this because it has an E and an R, an E and an R, erythrocytes or red corpuscles. This is how you get your oxygen to your body. If you have, if the blood has been depleted of oxygen, it's a deep scarlet red, but oxygen rich blood is bright red. So when it comes from your heart and your lungs, it's bright red, it's just been oxygenated. When it's coming back in your veins, where they take our blood from, if you look at your arm, they appear to be blue through the skin. It's just um, much more, it's a darker red in there. It is, it, all the oxygen has been depleted. It's coming back to get more oxygen. Okay, white blood cells. The key, word, key prefix here is LU. Okay, so if I have white spots on my skin, I have leukoderma. If I have um, white spots on my nails, like this, I have leukonychia. And if I have white blood cells, I have leukocytes or white corpuscles. So leu always means white. And what are they for? They're there to fight um, any kind of infection in our body. So you can see here, plasma makes up about 55% of the blood. White blood cells only 4%, but they're mighty. They're our defenders. And then red, red blood cells make up about 41%. 
Okay, we also have blood platelets in there. This is what clots our blood. Think of this, these are thrombocytes. So think about when you cut yourself and you're bleeding, think about it throbbing, okay? And that we want that throbbing to go away. We want that blood to clot, thrombocytes. And then again, plasma, that's our stream that everything else is floating in. It's about 90% water, okay? So it carries red, white blood cells, and blood platelets are floating around in that. Okay, arteries and veins. All right, so arteries take the blood away from the heart, away from the heart. So remember, A and A, arteries away. This is the good blood that's going to all parts of your body to give it oxygen and um, to help fight infection, things like that. So the good blood comes from your heart and your lungs, away from your heart, down to all parts of your body, back up through your veins, okay? So, and down here, <clears throat> when it gets to the end of the arteries, then it goes into the capillaries and it takes nutrients and oxygen to each individual cell. Then the capillaries take the waste from your cells and put it in your veins, and then your veins take the oxygen poor blood back up to your heart. Um, there's valves in the veins, so remember V and V, valves and veins, so that if the blood's down here and your, your heart pumps, the blood starts to come up and then the valves close. And then it comes up and the valves close. That keeps it from going backwards. When people get older and their valves start wearing out, that's when they start getting blood pooling in their legs and their legs get large and red and they have lots and lots of trouble with their legs. Okay, but if it's working properly, it keeps the blood from going back down and it takes it back up to the heart. Remember, all this happens in 20 seconds. It makes one full um, um, circulation from the heart to the bottom of your feet up again to your heart. Okay, arteries are thick-walled, veins are thin-walled. Therefore, they take blood from us out of our veins doesn't matter if it has oxygen in it, that's not what they're interested in, and they are closer to the surface. Arteries are thick-walled, so if you've ever had to have an IV put in your artery rather than your vein, you realize very quickly that it is thick-walled. It's very hard to get that needle into that artery. All right, blood throat flow through the heart. So you've got your general circulation, that's when the, the blood goes to the heart. Then you have your pulmonary circulation. It goes from your heart to your lungs. Then you go back to your systemic. It goes back to your heart and to the body. So body to heart to lungs, back to heart, back down. Okay, and it just keeps going like that. It has to keep going to your lungs to get oxygenated. Pulmonary means lungs. Systemic is through the whole body back to the heart. All right, now, when we talk about veins and arteries, they all have the same name. What I mean by that is that if I'm talking about my radial artery, I also have a radial vein. If I'm talking about my ulnar uh, artery, I also have an ulnar vein. So the veins and the arteries always come in pairs and they have the same name based on where they're located. There's one exception in your whole body and that's right here. So when you go and you watch a horror movie and somebody slashes someone's neck, they always talk about the jugular vein. That's true. There is a jugular vein in there, but the artery is called the carotid. Okay, this is the only one that's not the same. So one through five, you've got a carotid artery taking the good blood up, and you've got a jugular vein taking the bad blood back down. I shouldn't say bad blood, but it doesn't have oxygen in it anymore. All right, so number one's the common carotid, and then it splits. You can see right here there's a split, and there's internal and external carotid. So just think of it like this. This is simplified. Internals going into your brain, externals going to your face and your superficial structures. 
Then you've got an internal jugular, bringing the blood back from your brain, and an external jugular, bringing the blood back from your face and head and neck, all right? So carotid and jugular. After that, whenever you're talking about any of these, you're talking about the artery and the vein at the same time. So occipital, that's easy. We know where that's at, the back of the head. Posterior auricular, behind the ear. Superficial temporal, so we've got it up in here where our temporal bone is. And external maxillary, okay, we know where our maxillary is, that's our upper jaw. Okay, this is also called the facial artery. All right, then you've got some superficial temporal branches off the temporal artery. You've got a frontal, a parietal, a middle temporal, a transverse, and an anterior auricular in front of the ear. You've got external maxillary branches, submental, remember mental always means chin, inferior labial, remember the, um, uh, I can't think of it right now, the labii inferioris, I can't think of the first name, was my lower lip and the labii superioris was my upper lip. So my inferior labial means my lower, somewhere in here, my lower lip, my angular, and my superior labial, my upper lip. Okay, arteries of the hand and arm, this one's su super easy. Our thumb is closer to our body, so that's always the radial. And our pink, little pinky is further away from the body, that's our ulnar. Okay, and we have some in here, some we we're familiar with, some we're not. Um, number two, anterior tibial. Our tibia is the big bone in our leg, so anterior would be in front of it, posterior would be behind it. Now this one you do need to know, dorsalis pedis. Okay, the dorsal fin on a, um, on a fish is on the top of it. That's the fin that you see sticking out of the water. And then pedis means foot. So basically this just means the top of the foot, okay? And your femoral vein would be at your femur up here. All right, now lymphascular. Okay, so it, um, it's derived from the plasma, okay? And it transports nourishment from the blood, carries away um, things from metabolism, helps maintain the fluid balance everywhere in the body, even where the capillaries can't get, and helps get the white blood cells everywhere. Okay, colorless liquid that travels through the lymph vessels. Okay, and again, I said it passes the nourishment to the capillaries and um, the cells of the body. Okay, your lymph nodes. We all know that when we get start getting sick, our lymph nodes get bigger, okay? That's because it's filtering out anything that's making us sick. That's why that's an indication that we have some sort of infection in our body because it starts filtering out the bad things and they stick in our lymph nodes and make them swell, okay? Again, swollen lymph nodes indicate infection. All right, true or false? Cardiovascular system is also called blood vascular true the cardiovascular system only uses only arteries to circulate blood through the body nope it also uses capillaries and veins the heart is encased in a membrane called the pericardium the blood carries toxins and waste products to the liver and kidneys to be eliminated white blood cells are also called white corpuscles or remember that word for white leukocytes the fluid part of the blood, the, the water that's going down the stream, is the plasma. Thick-walled blood vessels that carry pure blood away from the heart are arteries. The process of blood traveling from the heart through the body is known as systemic or general circulation. The radial artery supplies blood to the thumb side of the arm and hand, and lymph distributes white blood cells to help develop immunity.